we'll do a chat. We'll just talk back and forth and I'll answer any of your questions and uh, we'll go from there. Let's see what you got. Rivers. This is a good, this is a good quote. It seems like we always have money for the losers and risk takers, but never for hardworking citizens of the nation. It does seem like it's skewed that way, but in this instance, for every depositor, you gotta remember, you know, every depositor that's, and not even people with 250,000 or below, 250,000 above, it doesn't matter. The government did say, hey, look, and I know people like get ticked off when I talk about regulation for some reason. I still think we should have a little regulation. Call me crazy. I don't think we should allow centralized exchanges to, you know, commingle our funds and uh, buy condos for their family members. Call me nuts. Maybe a little clarity of what a security is. I'm just I'm not going to go off base, but you get where I'm coming from. So like in this situation, worked out pretty well, right? For the depositors. And again, there's this, I forgot to say this one. This was a great quote from uh, DeFi, DeFi Dummy. And this is what I was talking about, about this, uh, don't beat yourself up. DeFi Dummy said, this is why the do your own research advice is a joke. If Forbes with their research staff can't get it right, how is the average burger flipping Joe supposed to do his own research? That's like saying, pilot the plane yourself if you want to travel. And it's true. I say do your own research just because it's like a blanket statement. But in all honesty, you could do it a thousand hours of research and you still won't get it right. Not even Warren Buffett shoots a thousand. So sometimes you just got to invest and pivot when you, when, when things change. That's what never, that's what I always never, I always never understood when people will say, Rob, why'd you change your mind on this project? Well, cause I found it, it sucked. That's why. Like, oh, you don't like it anymore? I'm like, no. So anyhow, that was a good one. Christopher says they will stop the hikes. They may. That'll be good for the short term. I don't know if it'll be good for the long term. The long term. Uh, Yeah. Unlimited deposit guarantee means unlimited loans. They're running banks, banks after three target crypto banks were said exactly right. Mm. <laughs> Just think about the whale banks that bought crypto. I don't know if they did buy crypto. Remember also, you know, these uh, crypto and digital assets are going up because Binance also converted all their stable coins into Bitcoin, Ethereum. So there is that aspect up to it. I want to say it's like a billion dollars. However, if that is the case, what's the volume? Well, it's interesting. The volume over 24 hours is 69,928,630,341. Interesting. What? And the, the volume of BNB is... 1 billion, but I guess their market cap is, it's all yeah, it's sort of my market cap. That's true. But yeah, when people say that the banks are buying, I don't buy that, but I could be wrong. It'd be interesting. I just don't see it. <laughs> if you want to find a guy to watch for that has the best glasses in YouTube, you got to watch Tom crown, the best glasses. Like I don't even wear glasses. And he's got them on lockdown. Also, if you want to learn how to trade, that's another thing. Glasses and trading. Definitely watch Tom Crown. <laughs> What's up, Tommy? Ah, Lucas Bradley. I had no idea Bernie Frank was on the board of Signature. Yeah, look at that. You think he would know. Uh, capitalism is winners, losers, and bailouts. This is true. Spicy as the times. Tom is uh, pretty bullish. Okay, so for all the, thank you. Thank you, wrenches. Get rid of, uh, get rid of the premium goat. It's too much. <laughs> Diesel, I sent you a message on Twitter. My bank has no issues. The question then, and Tom brings it up, is who's gonna be the next bank to fall? That's the question. Uh, watch Tom's stream. He actually went over that. Bicky on Twitter. Thank you. Hector, domino effect. Yeah, I mean, this will be the last one for a while. We'll see. Why, thank you. It's uh, good lighting. 
and uh, sun. And because I don't do so many live streams, I get to go out and play volleyball. One of my knees not all messed up. Thank you, vacation. You're welcome. Thanks for the update. Sharing. SVB signature and Silvergate. Uh, interesting. APIT artists. Rob, the government bailing out depositors of SVB shows that they could also bail out the depositors of all the crypto platforms that went down. Hmm. But they won't because they need to prop up the corrupt banking. Again, watch that. Ah, crap. You know what I forgot to tell everybody? Was that video from Guy is right here in the description. But if you can, if you search for Coin Bureau, it's the first one that comes up. It was really good. Even, even me, I was like, oh, I did not know that the Fed now is coming that fast. Kind of scary. And I'm not a big, uh, you know, they're all against me type of person. But what Guy was talking about did make a heck of a lot of sense. Scary. Mr. Two Point, fantastic question. What are you doing with that 24%? Just waiting for any good opportunity, crashing crypto equity, something else? Real estate. Because if you don't know, like I've been dollar cost averaging the regular amount for, I want to say a month now. I was micro DCing. That cash is, uh, the majority of that will go to fund new properties that are going to be distressed. And that day's coming fast. I don't know if it's going to come tomorrow or six months or a year and a half from now. I'm not for sure. But I know they're coming. And that's what happened, uh, happened in 2008. It's what happened in the 80s, what happened in the 70s, and it's going to happen again. This is true. That's very true. Ah, money on bank or Bitcoin? Uh, in all honesty, I mean, you can still do the things in the bank. It's not like the banks are going to let you down right now. I know people, I know everybody's like, everybody will tell you, take that money out of the bank and da da da. You can do that. But then you got to stick on your mattress. I don't know if that's uh, the right thing for you to do. The best thing I can tell you, though, is if you have any of your crypto on exchange, why do you do that? It's very simple. There's this thing, it's called a nano ledger. I talk about it all the time. And you can buy them quite cheaply, even at Best Buy. And I show you how to use them on Dan Teaches Crypto, which is .com, which is free. So for that one, I can't help you. But that's okay. <laughs> John says, with all these banks going on, I'm depositing my cash for the safety of the Sinaloa Cartel Bank. Look, if anybody knows how to move money, it's those guys. Uh, let's be honest. <clears throat> I know if I'll burn. Inverse your own research. Desert Dog. Uh, Andre's got a good point. ETH to get more and more deflationary. Nothing to see here, though. There's a great website, uh, sound.money. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this one. I guess it's not there anymore. Okay, that's why it's called ultrasound.money. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As far as deflationary website, ultrasound.money. And you can have it to simulate a proof of work, or you can switch it over and have a proof of stake. And what it shows you is the amount of ETH supply as it went from proof of stake, which is what we have right now. And let's see, current supply issuance. Supply growth is negative 0.47% a year. Burn. Uh, so, there you, oh, so it looks like deflationary. But if you want to switch it over to what it was when it was proof of work, so it'd be 3% of proof of work if the year issuance 4,000. Let me see the other one. Wow. So yeah, it is deflationary for right now. So Andre got a point. I got to tell you, me personally, I was a little bit hesitant to talk up Ethereum because I always thought there was going to be an ETH killer out there. I did think that. But I got to tell you, after talking to a lot of these different projects, we we're trying to launch our own, not our own crypto. It's a flappy bird. It's, I've been talking about it for a while. I see where they've got a stranglehold in a lot of places, unfortunately. But that's it. B William O'Leary says Bitcoin will be down to 12K in four months. Bill could be right. You never know. 
Uh, Rob, you watched the Lynn Alden interview on what Bitcoin did. Fed is broke. What's your thoughts? No, I haven't. I probably will. Lynn Alden, such a, she's smart. Very smart. Sometimes it goes over my head. I'm like, what? I gotta, re I gotta rewind it and play it back again. Lynn was also on Ben's show. That was a great one. I watched that a couple of times. Very well done. Mm. <laughs> 11 or 100, we can do better. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. Let's see. Ameritrade. No way. Starling Bank UK is banned all crypto transaction in or out. Well, not everybody got the memo. And here's the thing. You have to understand, uh, this is going to happen. Some banks are just like, we don't want to be a part of that. That's just, we just don't want to do it. We just don't want to deal with it. That's fine. That's the economy. That's the uh, free trade. So that's the market. If uh, they don't want to do it, then you move on. Unfortunately, the question that you might have is, well, will all banks do this? No, I don't think so. And if they will, I just don't see it happening. There's too much money to make. And let's be honest, banks are greedy. <laughs> yeah, that could be true. Joshua says, how hard is it to move to Puerto Rico? If you do a search for Digital Asset News Puerto Rico, there'll be a couple of videos that come up. Uh, watch those videos. Watch the, the latest one. I tell you exactly how hard it is. Not that tough, but it depends on what you want to do. Mm. <laughs> Still screaming after you to the Mashinskis unless they unearth. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Let's see. Hector's got a good point. I keep hearing this the last one for a while. As far as, you know what I kept hearing, Hector, was this. I kept hearing, that's the last black swan. We're not going to, this is it. The, you know, the bottom's in, black swan. And that, you know, we're not going to keep having these. And it seems like every, every time that I turn on the, on the TV, there's a black swan event. Now, this black swan event did pretty well for crypto investors, correct? We're doing pretty nice, almost up 16%. But in all honesty, like, how long can we maintain this moving forward? I don't know for sure, but I know I would take a little bit of, me personally, took a little profits today. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Rob, I said it before, but landlords that earn a lot of passive income have a better than a vast majority of workers. So many of us can't afford to be there, though. No, it's true. But the thing is, is that you can at some point get there. I mean, look at, like, look. So, uh, like, when I was growing up, it was just uh, me and my brothers and my mom. My mom wasn't the, she was a very hard worker, right? But finance and investing, not her thing, you know? And then for a while, we were homeless for a bit. And it sucked. But, you know, as a kid, you're like, well, you know, it could be worse. I mean, I was still in the United States. That was pretty awesome. But then, you know, you you get over it. Like, I was like, well, I got to make some money, High school didn't do so hot. One of the military, and that's pretty much got me over the hump. And you just kind of figure out like, okay, there's something that I can do. I got to start from bottom and just slowly but surely. And then, you know, you get into like your 40s or pushing 50. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, all this stuff kind of worked out. And it doesn't matter if you didn't make it before. It doesn't matter where you started. It just matters where you, where you try to finish up. So everybody can start, start somewhere. All right. I got you, Vicky. I saw your message. Uh, in your view, is this recent pump in crypto sustainable? Yeah, it's sustainable in the fact that if, if people keep hearing about more bank insolvencies and if the government doesn't seize it or they just more banks start to go down, then yes, it is sustainable because people are like, what's that Bitcoin that all my friends keep or my friend, my crazy one friend keep telling me about? That's me. I'm that friend. Maybe I should look into that because maybe I can actually have access to that. And that could be like my hedge against banks collapsing. Wouldn't that be crazy if it wasn't the financial ruin that did it and it wasn't a housing market crash that did it and it wasn't inflation that did it. It's just a bunch of banks b going bust that brought crypto to the forefront and just made this uh, enormous <laughs> this uh, this enormous uh, bull run, huh? Wouldn't that be interesting? 
Yes. Andre's got a good point. I show my wife your how to do a ledger video just in case I die. She booked more the website. Great. It'll be up for the end of time. Well, until I go away. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yes. Uh, Jade, crypto in my jam. That was a that was a great interview. I need to link that. Mm. Rob, one Australian visit, mate. I've never been there. I should probably go there. Pubs. I like that. Pubs and dogs. Even better. Tito's got a good point. And the point is Polygon. Yeah. <laughs> the next black swan is Dunkin' Donuts going under. Let's hope not. I got to keep this svelte body up. His body's run on Duncan. Huh. I shorted from 25K, took profits of 19K. I tripled my money, pulling out my profits and kept my initial in, and I got liquidated. I'm building a new short position. Well, eh, all right. Yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, it doesn't matter where you start. Thank you. What will it mean if ETH and other cryptos are deemed secure in the U.S.? Would it even be possible for the members of blockchain to register? Yeah, it'll it'll be possible. The thing is, here's a here's a scenario. Gary wins out for whatever reason, and he gets his way, and everything is a security. He gets Congress to agree with him, right? Because it's not Gary's job to write the rules. It's Gary's job at the SEC to enforce the rules. Unfortunately. He 100% believes what he believes. Or maybe his overlord tell him what to believe. I don't know. But so Gary is going to say that everything is a security. The CFTC is going to say, no, 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 everything's a commodity. So I don't see how they can start enforcing that without Congress stepping in and going, let us write the rules and the laws because you guys don't know or we don't really know where things lie, which I think is the smartest, the smartest way to do it. So we'll take a look at the, how we test and maybe we'll update it. Maybe we'll do a new organization. Barring all that, let's just say that they say, okay, Ethereum is a security and everything else is security besides Bitcoin. Well, first of all, the price of Bitcoin is going to go through the effing roof because people are like, well, great. I know I can get that on these exchanges because now these exchanges have to register as selling securities. And the ones that they don't, which is only one, which is Bitcoin, they're all going to have Bitcoin. So people are going to start buying it up and the price is going to go crazy and whatever else. So the Ethereum Foundation, Cardano and Avalanche and all those different organizations, they're going to be like, okay, well, how do I, how do we register our project with the SEC? And they're going to have to do it. They have to jump through a bunch of hoops. They're going to need a lot of money to do those things. And the ones that can do that are the ones that are successful right now and actually have a good product. The ones that are like ranked 900, 800, 700, most of those will just die because they don't have the funds to do it. And they spent too much in the bull market because they were just a bunch of scams anyhow. But the ones that are like mid-tier, uh, the bigger, the probably the bigger crypto products, just like in the dot-com era, the, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, you know, uh, these big titans, Amazons, they're just going to buy up these, these smaller crypto products, absorb them into themselves and make themselves even better. That's exactly what Facebook did. It's exactly what Amazon does and Google. The same is going to happen with crypto. They're going to absorb them. They're going to take all the developers, all their IP. They're going to start to register with the SEC, and that's going to then they're going to be put on some exchange. The exchanges themselves are going to have to register just like how every place that sells a security, aka stocks, has to do it themselves, paperwork, time, and whatever else. But in that time frame, Bitcoin should take off because it's the only crypto that people are going to be able to buy because everything else is stuck because Gary Genzer for some reason got his way. That's in bizarro world. I don't know that's going to, going to happen, but there's a reason why Bitcoin's my number one hold in my portfolio. It's because of nonsense like that. So that's it. That's what I see. Uh, other than that, who knows? Maybe the, the Congress will create a whole new governmental organization to oversee digital assets. That would be the ideal. Poof, no kidding, golfer. Too much stuff going on. I couldn't I couldn't uh, just fit that into a regular video. I had to talk to everybody. Yeah. Uh, a polygon with zero points. Any advice on, a on IA projects? Be careful because I don't really know if any of them are really worth their weight. 
like I, I don't really get into them. But I gotta tell you, Chat GPT and uh, Mid Journey, fantastic stuff. Where do you think I get all the titles for these videos? Ah. Yeah, Alice Crypto says this is unsustainable. Could be right. Matt says, how do you feel about keeping fiat on Coinbase? I pull my crypto off to a ledger. Great. What about fiat? I said with Luminars, what do you think? In this situation, I think this could work out very well for Matthew because he's got loan orders. Maybe he sets in, he's like, look, when Bitcoin goes to 18K, execute. And for that, you know, you might need fiat on there. Me personally, um, I don't do that. All I do is just set it up to, to buy every day, you know, these different cryptos and altcoins. But uh, for you, sure, why not? But the big thing is remember, uh, and you're probably doing this as t you know, every so many days, start taking your crypto off as if it makes sense. If you're buying $10 of Ethereum every day, there's no reason you have to take your Ethereum, put on your nano ledger because just the, uh, the fees will crush you. So Jason goes, Rob, what's your view of more and more banks get bailed out? Is it worth increasing dollar cost average amount and buy daily rather than weekly? Well, I can't tell you what to do, but I, for me, I dollar cost average every day. And what I use is I use Coinbase because they have Coinbase One. And when you sign up for Coinbase One, it's 29 bucks a month, but there's no fees of the $10,000. If you pay for a year, it's only 19 bucks a month, which is what I pay. And every day I just buy crypto. It's the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Avalanche, Polka dot, chain link, near, and some other ones I always forget about. But yeah, it's like every day, every week. And as far as like if more banks get bailed out, honestly, if more banks get bailed out, I think that would instill more confidence into people. I think one of the reasons why we see a little bit of a of a rally today is that people are scared. They don't know where to put their their money. Even my brother, who is not a crypto person, was like, Hey man, what do I do with my money? I was like, well, remember that stuff I was talking to you about a long time ago, which you never did? Maybe you should put into that. And um, so, yeah, I think as more banks get bailed out, I know some people say it's not a bailout, it's not a bailout, whatever it is. Um, that'll instill confidence and people will calm down. People have a very short attention span and a memory. That's for sure. Hmm. So Noel says, if our crypto are securities, can we manage our crypto by an accredited investor? I buy securities every day. It's on, on Robinhood. They're stocks. Those are securities. So you don't need a credit investor. I mean, to get some really good deals, which I got to tell you is probably the worst rule. And I get the debate, but it seems like if you make a lot of money, you can make more money because you're an accredited investor. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Tito says buy Coinbase if it drops below, perhaps. Yes. Brad asked the question. Weren't you the guy who believed Voyager was a good investment? Well, first of all, I didn't see their problems per se in the beginning, but I believe that Voyager was great. I thought it was a fantastic platform. I liked the fact that it was a brokerage and it would use different crypto exchanges so it wouldn't go down. So like if one exchange went down, it's okay because they would just use different ones and they would get you the best price. They would they were supposed to be taking profits on the spread. Unfortunately, everything works till it doesn't. And then when Steve Ehrlich, the CEO, decided, him and his team decided to take a massive loan to Three Arrows Capital, uncollateralized, and only because they are a public company were those documents released. And within, that was two weeks prior to when they shut down withdrawals. And I took a look at that and said, I can't use Voyager anymore. And I did a video on that. And there is a link in the description of every single one of my videos, which talks about the Celsius Voyager timeline. And I said right here, June 22nd, take all your crypto off of Voyager. Here's the link to the video. July 1st, withdrawals frozen. So to answer your question, Brad, you are 100% correct. I did believe in Voyager. And the end, I just didn't believe in me and moved on. 
So, uh, yeah, John's got a good point. I don't know, Rob, something doesn't smell right. It feels like one big push up before a massive dump. <laughs> it's done next year. Could be. That's just it. Like, you know how you, di like, I dollar, I ladder dollar cost average in. I can dollar cost average right out. Maybe I sold some avalanche today. Maybe I sold some near today. Just a little bit. Just to have some on the side. Because maybe I think it's going to go down. Maybe it doesn't go down. Maybe it goes up. It's okay. I've been buying every single day for a month. Actually, I've been buying every single day for over a year and some change now. But to a lesser extent. A, a month before. Called micro DCing it. That's true. This is what me and Ben and Guy talk about after the shows, if we're going for a recession. And he says, if you haven't figured out by now, the Fed is spoon feeding us a recession. Maybe so. But it's what flavor are we going to get that recession in? Is it going to be red licorice or black licorice? Is it going to be a soft landing or a hard landing? And that's the big question. Uh, yeah. J2 Day says, Rob, weren't you the guy who said to walk shoulders? Eh, yes. As a matter of fact, me and Meme and Lucas and uh, uh, Max and Brian, people who are in the chat right now, we meet at Amigos de los Animales on Sunday, 8 in the morning here in, uh, well, it's in Puerto Rico, um, but it's just in uh, Luisa. And we walk the shelter dogs on the uh, on the boardwalk it's very nice it takes about an hour or so dogs really love it i love to do it and people come out and support me so i appreciate that then i buy them breakfast it's a pretty good deal although no one really takes me up on that breakfast offer for some reason everyone wants to pay for themselves because i think they're just a bunch of ballers well fine yeah and that's it and then we'll go there fair offense says i can't see how this ends well with money printing and inflation Fair fan, neither did I. That's the big question. But that's it for today. So look, everybody, thanks for stopping by. Listen to uh, us go on and on. Tomorrow will just be a regular video. Probably not another live stream until the weekend, but that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thumbs up, like it, subscribe, and uh, good luck for this week. I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.